Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and I'm joined by a special guest today, James Guy, joining us. What's going on? Yeah, good, man. I've just been in the house all day, playing Xbox, trying to keep keeping fit, keeping clean. Yeah, and doing the same thing, just keeping your hands clean. That's it. You know it. What? So tell me about, uh, you know, what's been the last, like, couple of weeks for you? What's that been like? So we know that the Olympics now has been moved up a year, Tokyo 2021. Um, yeah. Walk me through the the steps of, of learning about that, the emotions, recalibrating. Okay. So let's go back three weeks now. So three weeks last Tuesday, we got told our trials was canceled. And we're like, okay, we get that. We kind of knew it was going to happen. And then the British Swimming, who look after us, said to us that the games now, they're going to consider people who won medals last year in Grand Jeu at the World Championships, people who are on the team. I thought, sound, we're going to go. Two medals last year, we're going to go. Fantastic, great. Um, and then obviously, we were told that the UK is going on lockdown. So everything's closed. Shops, leisure centres, clubs, restaurants, gone. So I was like, right, okay. Went home. Obviously, when my trials were cancelled, but our coaches would right, have the rest of the week off and just relax because there's nothing else to, to train for. So I come home, and then the next thing I see is the games are being postponed. And I see, obviously, people are tweeting saying it should be postponed. I think, yeah, I, I agree 100%. No one can train. Everyone's in the same boat. Let's get it up for next year. And it came out a few days ago saying, oh, it's next, next July. And I saw it and I was just like, you know, that's great because it gives me more time to prepare with my new coach. Um, I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise, really. I've been with Dave McNulty now since August 2019, um, straight after the Worlds I moved. And I think having another, well, year with him will be, will be great because the work we've been doing is fantastic. I'm in a great, I'm in a great place. I've been racing fast in season. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's kind of good news, really. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, what's it been like from uh, like your national team mates? Like, you know, everyone's in a different situation, it seems like, depending on, I mean, even yeah. outside of the UK, like all over the world, I see very different things. How, how Have you guys been like communicating with each other? I know you mentioned Xbox played. <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting. I talked to um, Adam Petey quite a bit. He's one of my best friends. And we just said, we're just taking it how it is. Like, we're all in the same position across the world. We're all in the same boat. Um, I'm not, I don't think anyone seems that fussed about it. Like everyone's kind of quite relaxed. It's not like it's life-threatening news where we can't compete at the game. I know it's upsetting and everyone's so focused for this year, but at least the games are still going to happen. It would be horrendous if they weren't going to have an Olympic Games. Like it's the pinnacle of our sport. Um, but I was chatting to, I said to you before, a couple of the American boys yesterday, and they haven't swam for a few weeks now. Michael Andrew, Townley Haas, Blake Peroni, and we're all in the same boat, and we're all just kind of chilling out, staying at home, trying to keep fit. Um, just trying to just just passing time really, and just hopefully we get back in the pool very very soon. Mm -hmm. So, what's your current uh, training routine like? Like, how are you staying fit? How are, how are you staying active? Yeah, so basically, um, I wake up in the morning. My usual routine is wake up about half nine. This is the day. This is on a Tuesday and Thursday. But now our centre have created this. The obviously the Zoom app's kind of blown up really. And every Monday, Wednesday, Friday now, we have a circuit session every morning for about half an hour. And that's quite intense, it's kind of like a hit session, which is pretty cool. I do my own workout in my little kind of garage I've got. I've got chin-up bar there, boxing bag, um, some of the new bands that Finnis have just brought out, the new slide, uh, slide land trainers there, absolutely brilliant. So I've been using them quite a bit just to help get some pulls because I can't have any access to any gyms, any pool. And then come back in, have breakfast, and then play Xbox all day. I mean, what else can you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, outside of training, I guess, uh, you mentioned Xbox. Like, how do you stay focused when there's – you don't really know how long you're going to be out of the water. The Olympics is in, you know, 15, 16 months. How do you stay focused? So, right now, it's just kind of trying to keep things ticking over. Uh, I'm trying to create my own website at the minute and – my own training plans, which is quite important, which is, I think, I think something to like, kind of pass time as well. Um, I, like, I made some brownies yesterday. It's just keeping your mind occupied and thinking about other things as well. So I've been looking at kind of what I want to do as well after something a bit more, looking at courses online I can look at. Um, but it's just keeping you, keep things to kind of and occupied. Like, this is not a break. This is not for me to sit back and gain 25 pounds in four weeks. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not how it works. I'm not doing that. It's just to keep kind of generally quite fit, keep strong. So when you get back in the water and whatever it is, you still got kind of 
a bit of muscle mass there. You're still aerobically quite fit. This is not a summer break. This is just kind of trying to pass time and keep things in the same position. So when you go back to the water, you're still quite strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree. You don't want to gain that Corona 19. Uh, no, as they no. Say. <laughs> no. What, um, what advice do you have for like the younger swimmers who look up to you? And I think one thing that's interesting about all of this, it sort of like humanizes everyone. Like everyone, no one really has that much of an advantage at this point. Everyone's no. in their house. So like, you know, you're more relatable in a lot of ways. Cause like, yeah, he's in his house too. Like, how do you, what do you tell the kids that are listening? I've been getting a lot of Instagram messages saying like, what can we do? What's, what's good for land training? I'm like, just find something that you like and keep mixing it up. Don't do the same thing every day. Otherwise your mind is going to, it's going to drive you mental. So just keep things mixed up, do different exercises and just do something like every few days. You don't have to go hard every single day. Like there's no need for that. We're not in the position to be doing that where we're not going to race now at the next major meet for almost 16 months. So it's just kind of doing things a bit differently, keeping happy and not kind of being slobby around the house, doing nothing, lying in bed all day, like get active, get out, go for your exercise once a day in the UK and just keep things ticking over. Like, as I said before, this is not a holiday. Everyone's in the same position. I'm at home with my mum and dad in Manchester and my brother next door. Um, like they were outside boxing before. So do you know what I mean? We're all in the same same boat here. It's what you make of your time while, whilst you're out of the water. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Tell me about the Olympic Games. You know, what was your experience like uh, for those who, you know, were watching live or maybe, you know, let's do a flashback. What was that like? Okay, so going back, wow, four years, I was 20 years old. And obviously winning the World Championships the year before, in the 200 free, I was kind of one of the heavy favorites to win the 200 free at the Games. Um, but one thing I learned that year is that everyone steps up so much more. It's, it's just one thing that hadn't quite hit me. And I think going to the games and I remember doing the 400 free heat, doing the final, and I was like, I was heartbroken. Just not what I wanted to achieve. And then obviously getting fourth behind a good friend of mine, Connor Dwyer, and the 200 free. Um, and obviously Chad getting second. They're good, they're good boys. I got on with them really, really well. It was an amazing experience. And to race the fastest and well, the greatest of all time, Michael Phelps in the relay, it's uh, like watching this guy your whole career. It's like boxing Muhammad Ali. So to do that, and that's the comparison, I think it is, because it's just racing and, and like fighting the best. So, but what an experience! Just the whole environment, the games, in the games village. But I heard Bob Bowman say a while ago, it's a normal swim meet just with loads of media around it, and that's all it is. Like it's nothing, anything different. You've got your own lane. It's a normal competition. You rest, you're shaved, and you want a PB. And one thing I didn't do at the games was that all I thought about was medals, 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 and that's not the right thing to do. Think about, the, as they say, the process and the medals will come to you. Think about how you're going to swim the race, stick to your tactics, and that will come to you. Mm-hmm. 100%. When it comes to competing internationally, like what are some of the most fond memories you have? It could be Olympics or any other competition. Okay, so I remember I've got three memories that I, I, really, li- I, I really love. We'll see. The, first, the main one is, this isn't like no any order, so... Obviously, winning the World Championship 2015, beating speeding Sun Yang on the 200 freestyle. I think he's never been beaten, I think, three or four times. And that's myself, because Kusuke Hagino and Matt Horton, I think, are on the 200 and 400 free. So, yeah. one of them, yeah. pretty special. Um, the next one is Budapest 2017. I, what did we do? One day was the 4x2 freestyle, really, and the 100 fly semi final. And I did the 100 fly, when went 50.6, like the sixth fastest time ever, which is like obviously I'm only a renowned for a freestyle swimmer, so to do that was great. Then half an hour later was to go 143 in the relay. I was like, I, I saw my time, I thought, that's not right, that's, that's going to be a mistake. <laughs> and found that I turned out, I turned 49.8 to feet, which is unbelievable. And the last thing was, obviously last year, uh, the last day, obviously not had, a, not had the best world championships, but the fastest I've been for quite a while. Uh, and I think I'm just kind of, I was kind of finding myself again as an athlete um, and obviously winning the 4 by one medley relay and obviously Duncan doing that amazing split at the end. It was just to beat the Americans. I know we say it, but like that's, they're the heavy favourites for that race. And to do that was such a surprise. Like, I thought we were going to get fourth. Like, I didn't bring my medal tracksuit ceremony stuff. I thought, oh, there's no point we're going to get fourth. Like, I had to borrow a kit. So to just come in and like be with the best guys in the world on the podium all together and having a laugh with these boys was great. And to win that was a a real special moment. 
Yeah. You, so you mentioned the 200 freestyle, and this is something that at my swim pro, I get asked, how do I race the 200 free? How do I get faster at the 200 free? It's probably the most asked question for us. Wow. About okay. How do you get faster? So what, how do you approach the 200? Um, is it different long course, short course? What are your thoughts? So short, long and short course are completely different. Like they, okay. are, they are far different than they are. Like they're just, there's no comparison. If you if if you can if you can't turn short course, you're not going to do a two hundred three. You have to be able to have good underwater, otherwise you've got no chance. And that's just yeah. that's it. Otherwise, you're going to come nowhere. Long course is all about swim speed and efficiency. So it's being able to go out the first hundred meters and then being able to go up another gear and then another gear again. So if you're going to go out too fast and you're going to burn the last seventy five, you're going to get caught. A lot of guys can go out really mm-hmm. fast two hundred meters. Like anyone can do that but it's about how fast you can come back. And it's evolved over the last few years. Where like now, most of the guys who, who are swimming it really quickly are coming back like absolute steam trains. Like they're coming back 26 lows and that's like quick. I mean, I think in Edinburgh a few weeks ago, I was in season and I went, I came back 26, seven. And that's like the best I've come back in. So to, be, to do that unrested, unshaded, I thought, wow, we're, in a, we're pretty fit here. But it's all about how fast you can be on the last kind of half of the race. It's being able to control the first half as much as you can and then come back really, really quick. Pick up the gears, pick up the legs, and then go the last 75. Mm-hmm. Do you think that, I, I've noticed that too, even in the 100 freestyle long course, you see different strategies. You, you know, you've of got course. guys that are going out like a freight train the first 50, and you've got people who are negative, almost negative splitting it. Um, do you think that's because you're laying off the legs or it's a tempo thing, a breathing thing? Like, how do you, how do you approach being able to come back like a freight train? I think it's just being able to control that first half of the race. You've got a mindset of before you dive in and you're thinking about, right, this is what I'm going to do. This is, this is the plan. This is what I've trained for. You do 100 frees or 3100 free in training every single day. Like, it's the way you've done it for the past year. Don't change it. And I think it, it's a, a number of things. It's your tempo, your leg kick. If you kick too hard the first half, you're not going to have the legs for the second half. It's as simple as that. But the, the best ideas are always kept simple. And the guys who come back fast and aren't, aren't going to be out there that fast in the first 50. Like, for example, a good friend of mine, Kyle Chalmers, he's not always the first to 50, but you know he's going to have the fastest back half of the race every single time. You look at his legs the second half of the race, they're going like absolutely clappers. Like, it's great to watch. Um, but no, it's something you've got to practice and learn how you can swim the race. Like, for me, for my Honda Fly, I know that I have to be out comfortably, but I know that I have the, I have the back end and, and endurance when I'm t- rested and shaved down because obviously all the four and free work years ago, I have that back end speed now. So if I'm out there 24 low, 23 high, comfortably at 50, then can come back 26 mid, 26 high. That's a good 50 point low for me. So it's interesting how you do it. Yeah. Tell me about the, the, the 50 point barrier in the 100 butterfly. I'm sure that's something that you know, you're, you're looking at, how, t- walk me through what your mindset is. Um, I mean, ever since we've been coaches, I've been doing a lot more aerobic butterfly. So just like we've been doing thresholds, hundred fly, I think we, we did a set in Australia and it's just kind of been able to repeat just effortlessly movements of just hundreds butterfly off 140 at threshold. And it just gets you really, really fit. So you know, the back half of the race, you've got that. But for the hundred butterfly, you know, obviously, Dressel's break the 50 point, and to get near that would be unbelievable. Um, but it's just kind of finding the way you swim it right. And for me, you have to have that perfect race where you don't go out too hard, you don't use the legs too much, and you have you can finish strong. Like the guys, as I said, as I said before, a lot of guys can go out fast, but not everyone can come back fast. And that's one thing that Phelps got exactly right every single time. He knew Cabbage was going to take out like an absolute rocket the first half of the race. But you know what? I'll let you take it out, and I'll watch you do it get to halfway, I'm going to come back and hunt you down. And that's what he did every single time. So you have to find a way you can do it the best. And I've, I think when I hit my personal best time, I would come back so fast. And that's the way I think I have to swim. That's, that's what works for me. If I go up too fast, I'm just going to die. Where people can hold on and I just can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, final topic here. Let's talk about the evolution of the sport of swimming. So, you know, a lot has changed. We're a similar age. Like I remember when I was a kid, growing up like swimming and watching swimming from a professional level it's a lot different people are obviously swimming faster there's more happening on the like sponsorship side i know you're with finis can you tell me about how you've seen the sport evolve over the last 
10 to 15 years and where you think it's going to be going in the future? Yeah, of course. I think, well, obviously I've been going proper since 2007. So I qualified for my first nationals there and I had like the old school, like the leg skin jammers and the body suits and that. Yeah. When I was 12 or 13, that's when the Arena X Glide came into it, where the Rome Worlds, everyone was breaking world records left, right and centre. And obviously the band came in. And then it kind of changed dramatically from 2010 right through to now. And it went from a period where the 2011 Worlds was really, really fast. The 203 there was probably the fastest it's been, and probably has been for a long, long time, in like the textile suits. But... As it's evolved, the racing's evolved as well. So I found in my events, especially the 400 free, a lot of guys from 1500 have dropped that and they've come down to the 400. Now, where these guys are coming back so fast, where before, your Ian Thorpe's, your Van den Hoogen bands, and he was a specialised 200 and 100 freestyler, where Thorpe, he was like, he would never go past the 800. Mm. Where, like now, obviously, Stun, who's been banned, Mac, Connor Yeager, this is a few years ago, um, obviously Dallas Rapsis Max was his main event was the 1500 years ago that was his like background event um, but it's changing it's it's the way the actual tactics of the race has changed like I used to turn in 149 for fun when I used to do it and that was like that was quick <laughs> I was quick where now a lot of the guys are turning in 151 152 and coming back 151 where I would kind of do like a Thorpe, go out quick and try and kind of hold on to a certain extent. Well, obviously he was a bit faster than me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's changing in different respects. Obviously Adam Peaty on the Brestrick side is uh, dominating that field and he's trying to find ways to go even, even quicker. Um, and they just look at the techniques and how it's, the freestyle hasn't changed that much really. But obviously the Brestrick, the butterfly, um, it's pretty special to watch. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see the sport evolve. And I think when we're through with what we're going through right now and the pandemic is over, you know, we can come together in 2021. That'll be really, I think oh. that'll be really impactful for the world because that'll be like the first unifying thing um, yeah. in person, hopefully that everyone can participate in. We hope to, to see you there. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Like just the way things are and hopefully next year with all the trials going well, I mean, it's just, I'm in a great place right now. I'm happy with my racing suit. I mean, that's one thing that's important is finding what works for you. And obviously, I kind of signed with Finis a few years ago, and we found this suit, the Rival 2.0, where I'm actually happy in that. I feel confident in that. I said, I absolutely love it. And that's one thing I'm excited about racing next year is that. So I can't wait. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Shout out to Finis. Uh, any other shout outs you want to give? Family? I mean, you, I, I know you mentioned you're at home, brother. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, the, obviously, mom and dad and family, they've been supportive for me. So if you didn't know, when I moved, when I first kind of, well, I went to boarding school in Somerset, which is like 300 miles from here where I am today. I was boarding there for six months, like moved away from home. I was 12 or 13. My family sold their house in Manchester and moved down for me. My dad changed his jobs and they moved their whole careers and life for me. And luckily what I did do is that it did work for me. It did, the move did change. And without them, I wouldn't know where I am today. Like things I've done in the sport, I absolutely love what I do. And they've just been a, a massive credit. And for that, I, I'm really, I'm, I really am. Thank you. Sweet. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us and share your insight. I think a lot of the tidbits about the 200 free and training and where you see the sport going are going to come in handy for a lot of people. So thanks, James, yeah, for sharing your insight. No problem, mate. Absolutely. Pleasure. I'd love to do it anytime. Mate.